Hi there, join me in this video in the Manifold Valley in the Peak District. As you can tell from this video, it's a really bright sunny day today and it's not ideal conditions despite what some um, beginners think. They think a sunny day like this provides really good conditions but it's actually very, very challenging. So I'm going to give you some tips in this video on how to take shots in bright sunny conditions like this if you have to. Now ideally you should go out at a different time of day that I'll talk about later in the video. but. Hopefully you'll find this video useful and I know that I'm really going to enjoy my photography. Clearly given ideal circumstances, the best time of day to take landscape photographs is the golden hour. Now that's an hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset. And at that time of day, you get very warm light that's not very contrasty and it really makes for pleasant photographs. Now, not all situations allow you to get out in that um, time, particularly in the summer where the sunrise is very early. Some people find it difficult to get out of bed. Now, if you want to get the great shots, you've got to make the effort. But sometimes you just have to come out when you've got this kind of bright light. So in this situation, there's quite a few things you can do to help get better photographs. And one thing that you can do if you've got bright conditions is find a shaded area. Now it sounds obvious, but it's a really useful tip. I've come up underneath some tree canopy by the side of the river and I found a rock down in the river and I've isolated that. Now to make it a little bit more atmospheric and to stand out, what I've done is I've put the big stopper on the front of the, the lens. Now what that is, is it's a 10 stop neutral density filter. So it really slows down the shutter speed. And because I'm underneath the, the tree canopy and it's fairly dark anyway, it's given me a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. And what I've got, with this rock here is quite artistic and I really quite like it. Just behind me here on the footpath, the sun is breaking through the trees and creating some patterns on the floor. Now it's not the greatest shot, but I'm just using it as an example of what you could look for if you're out and about. The sun coming through on the floor creating different patterns can make some really interesting shots. What I've just done with this scene here behind me is taken a series of shots as a cloud went in front of the sun. And what it did was cast a shadow on this hill in the background. Now that really helped create some depth in the image. At the moment, looking at this scene here, it's very, very flat because the sun is right behind the camera where I'm filming. And so you've got no idea about how far away this hill is. But when there's a little bit of shadow coming across across the hill, it really creates a much bigger um, idea of depth. And so with the shadow on the hill and the foreground lit, it really pushes the foreground forward. See what you think. I've set up this shot on purpose just to highlight the difficulty you get in bright conditions. Because the sun's over to my right hand side, this side of my face is very, very bright and this side is very, very dark. This is what we mean by very, very contrasty conditions and it makes taking photographs very difficult. So while I'm in this bit of woodland here, I'm trying to use this to my advantage. What I'm doing is trying to look for some light catching trees um, that can be used just to create a bit of atmosphere. Now to do that, what I'm having to do is underexpose the shot so I don't blow out the highlights, but it actually creates quite an interesting effect. But I'm just trying to scout out the right tree that's attractive. Now, one of the options you've got in these kind of conditions is to think about how your pictures might look 
in black and white. Now, I would never suggest taking pictures in mono because if you do that, you strip out all the colour and you've got no options to put the colour back. But if you take a colour picture thinking about how it might look in mono, then you can always convert it in software and really bring out the contrast and make good use of it because really sunny, contrasty conditions actually work very, very well in mono. Just here I found a much better little inlet into the main river and we've got some really nice waterfalls going on behind. It's in shade so we've not got any of the problems with the bright sunlight so that's great. What I've tried to do with the shot is keep out some of the sky that's appearing behind and just focus on the foreground so I don't get any issues with blown out highlights. Now you've just seen me do a little bit of gardening as well. I've put a rock here in the stream that I'll remove in a second so I can get to these boulders just behind me and I've placed a few little coloured leaves um, on the rocks just to make it seem more autumnal. As it was when I found it there was a bulk of leaves built up behind one of the rocks and there was also a dead magpie that I've moved with a stick. So I've just made the scene look a little bit more attractive and as I said in my last video, as long as you're not damaging the environment, arranging the, the picture to make it look better in my book is fine. So I do have two slight advantages this morning. One is I'm filming in the bottom of a valley, so there is quite a bit of shade from the sun and also the sun is quite low because we're now at the beginning of November so the sun isn't as high in the sky as it would be in the middle of summer. So behind me is Thor's cave. Now the cave is just here um, set in this pinnacle of rock up on the top of the, the edge of the valley. I'm going to go up there in a second and it's a main reason why I came to the Manifold Valley today um, as well as trying to give a bit of instruction of taking pictures in bright light. Now at the moment this side of the valley where the, the pinnacle of rock is is in shadow because the sun is over the other side and there is a little bit of cloud that's come over which has actually helped the photography it's not helped my instruction part of the video but that's just the way it goes um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb up to the cave and we're going to take some pictures from up there I might have overstated this when I said it was a climb. There is actually a path that winds all the way up, but it's quite steep in some places and there is quite a few steps and my old knees will be protesting by the time I get to the top. So for me, it still is quite a climb. I've made it up to the cave. Um, it's been a little bit of a climb and my knee's really quite hurting. But anyway, it's worth the view. What I've done is taken a picture over the valley and because there's now a few clouds, we've got areas of bright and dark spots and it actually makes for quite an interesting shot because there's some bright areas of sun and then some dark areas where the clouds are. So it gives quite a bit of um, depth to the picture. Now the entrance to the cave is quite steep and slippery and I've got quite a bit of equipment with me so I'm not going to attempt to go in today because I don't think that's going to be safe with all the equipment that I've got and there's not actually that much to see once you get in. It's not that spectacular inside. I really wanted to come for the views and just to um, see this um, grand arch here behind me.
So that proved a lot easier coming down than it was going up. One of the other things that I did while I was up at the cave is I took a shot where uh, a walker was coming out of the cave and that helps to just give it a little bit of scale. So I'll show you that now. I hope that's given you some ideas about how you can take pictures in sunny weather. Yes, it's not ideal conditions, but you can still get some reasonable pictures if you just try a few of the techniques that I've suggested in this video. I'm particularly pleased with the little stream that I got uh, flowing down with the little waterfalls. Yes, albeit it was in shade, but it still makes for quite a nice picture. Now you might have noticed in recent videos that there's a lot more camera movement. Now I did get a question about whether somebody's coming out filming with me. Now that's not the case. What I've actually done is I've bought a gimbal and now you can see that the camera is tracking me as I move um, and that's part of the feature of this new gimbal. So in future videos, stay tuned, I'm going to talk more about the gimbal and the functions it's got. If you've enjoyed this video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at Dukedom Photography. Leave me your comments there and you can also see lots of my pictures. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, you can also support me by visiting my Teespring store where I've got a range of merchandise on offer, but you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe and the bell notifications. That really helps me out and it also helps you to stay up to date with all of my future content. Watch out for next week's video that goes live at four o'clock on Sunday. You can always go and check out this video helper here in the meantime, but all that's left now is to say stay safe and I'll see you soon.